We continue to preview the 2023 college football season. Our stop today is Georgetown, Kentucky, and it is a privilege to get to visit with Chris Oliver, the head coach of the Tigers. And coach, you're in your second season now with the program, seven and three in 2022, just uh, moving across a, a lateral move from one great university to another. Talk about year one at Georgetown. Well, it was the first time in my career uh, as a head coach where I have, have made a change. Uh, I was, you know, 13 years at my previous institution, 12 seasons. And, you know, we built that program from scratch. So, uh, you know, when I started at that school uh, in, in January of 09, we still had almost 20 months before we were going to kick off. So I had a little bit of a runway there uh, to, to build the program and recruit and hire assistant coaches and all those things. This was a very different dynamic. Uh, and and when, when we made the decision to take on a new opportunity, it was you know immediately into recruiting that class that was already going on and, and getting to know the existing and returning players. So it was a very different dynamic. I think my own comfort level right now is significantly uh, in a better place than I was uh, a year ago or 18 months ago. Uh, but I thought the kids in our program did a great job. I thought our assistant coaches really came in and, and helped us you know, set the tone for some of the changes and some of the things that we wanted to, to put into place. And, and um, you know, we're excited about certainly going into year two. I know as the head coach, uh, I'm pretty fired up about it, uh, just that comfort level and, and where we're at. I like the analogy of, of the runway, too, that's uh, a longer runway. I'm sure from one, I, I had a mental picture there then of uh, the runway on, a, on an aircraft carrier in the ocean, much shorter. Run much much shorter. shorter. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, that's a great way to put it as well. It was, it was much shorter. Uh, there was no easing into, uh, into that next season for sure. Well, seven and three, that's a, that's a solid start any way around coach. And so you, you look back and look ahead then, uh, players that are returning and there are a number of solid players that are coming back. I know uh, you have a little bit more time as you were talking about from the recruiting perspective as well, a little bit more comfort there, but among those players returning Garrett Slunaker, Garrett Slunaker coming back and, uh, he was leading the way for you, a young player at quarterback and he'll be back for 23. Yeah. Garrett got a, had a great spring and, and, uh, you know, a really solid first uh, year. He and Drew Hartz uh, rotated and split time for the first half of the season last year. And, and Drew ended up having a, a high ankle sprain in the Pikeville game. Uh, I think it was game six. And that opened the, the door for Garrett to take more reps down the stretch. And, and Garrett took advantage of that. But I think you go back into spring and, and uh, you know, those guys are still competing. Uh, you know, there's some other guys in our program. Caleb Jacob is another talented guy who is right there working his butt off and, and you know, amongst others. Uh, so it's one of those things where uh, everybody recognizes the talent that, that Garrick has and, and that he had a really solid true freshman year and had a great spring. But no one's just going to hand him that job either. Uh, and I think it's fun. I think we got a really good quarterback room. And those guys compete, they're friendly, uh, but they all want to play. And I feel like we have a number of guys who are college uh, level quarterbacks in the Mid South Conference who really, you know, can be starters in a championship caliber program. So I'm excited about you know continuing to move forward with those guys and and getting the training camp and seeing where that goes. Coach, you mentioned the Mid-South Conference, a, a very strong football conference it is. Darius Neal able to put up some numbers uh, against some very tough defenses in that yeah. conference as well. Well, Darius is a very physical running back. Uh, you know, he, he works his tail off uh, in the weight room just with his conditioning. And, and he's a guy that as the season went on, we probably – did a little bit more self scout said he's a guy we probably need to get the ball a little bit more to uh, because he, he's extremely productive. And one of the things about Darius that's really fun is that he can be his own blocker, um, you know, meaning he's tough to bring down one on one. You know, if you get him uh, the ball in space and have a safety or a linebacker who's trying to tackle him, uh, that's a that's a tough matchup, I think, for the defender oftentimes. And. And Darius can be that that you know his own blocker, so to speak. So we're excited about him, and you know Isaiah Cobb is back for us uh, in the backfield, and he had a lot of carries as well, and some other younger guys who were who were developing uh, late through last season. So we're excited about that group of guys and where we're at in that position group compared to where we were 
uh, coming out of, of spring a full year ago and, and them learning, you know, our new style of what we're doing in the offense and, and that transition uh, of schemes that we went through a year ago. Fortunately for Darius Neal, he doesn't have to be his own blocker all the time. I mean, you have some some strength on that offensive line. Not only that, but the experience is there. And, of course, with the COVID year, that still uh, factors into uh, all, of, all of these players' academic opportunities, I guess is the best way to say that. You have so many people coming back on that offensive line. Yeah, I think we have a, just a – Big, big difference in where we're at in that position group compared with uh, the year before. A lot of the same faces are back, but, you know, their uh, comfort level with what we're doing schematically, you know, we changed from an old school run and shoot type of system uh, under the previous coaching staff here. And they were very successful at what they were doing, but it was it was pretty different with especially for the guys up front. Uh, with what they were asked to do under the previous coaching staff and our scheme that we brought in here on offense over the past season. Uh, and when we when we review spring of 2022 uh, video versus spring of 2023 video, I think we're way, way ahead with that group of guys. And we've got some really good leaders in that group. We've got a lot of reps coming back under our belt. Uh, so, yeah, I think Darius and – and Isaiah and all those quarterback groups and all those guys are pretty excited about, you know, how that offensive line has progressed. Uh, but we got a lot of experience up there uh, up front, and, and we're going to rely on those guys to, to take a big step forward and, and put it out on the field this fall. We're visiting now with Chris Oliver here on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here as we are enjoying talking about the 2023 college football season. It is not that far away. <laughs> Coach, in year two with the program, I, I want to ask one more thing if we stay with the offense for just a little bit. You all led the country in fourth down conversion rate, and you were not at all uh, timid about doing it for it on fourth down. Talk about that a little bit. Well, that's been part of our philosophy on offense for a number of years, um, You know, both here last year at Georgetown and and we were when we were at uh, Lindsey Wilson, and I was the head coach there. And, you know, we want to be aggressive on fourth down, and and you know we want to put ourselves in situations where uh, you know we're, we're efficient on first down. And as we move through the the second, third, if we get to fourth, where we put ourselves in manageable situations. And I don't love to punt once we cross the fifty. Uh, that's for sure. So we want to be aggressive with that. And and I'm not saying I'm into all the analytics of the game that have kind of taken over, especially at the NFL level. But I do buy into some of those things. So we want to be aggressive with that. And, and you know, transparency, too. Uh, I think we were a little bit average to good on offense last year. Uh, now, I'm encouraged. I think we're going to take a big step forward on offense this year. Uh, but I think we were sort of average to good as a, as a collective offense a year ago. So we wanted to be a little bit more aggressive and, and try and create some things there. So I don't think – our fourth down uh, attempts will necessarily go down moving forward, but uh, hopefully we're a little bit more efficient as we move into the red zone as well. And, and we want again, to continue to put more points on the board than we did a year ago. Well, that's something I, I look forward to watching then and seeing how the team develops this year and some of those stats, how they, they work along the way. You look on the defensive side of the ball and, and you do have players returning. You have Chad Holleran returning, you have Peyton Stanford returning, which are at the top of the list when it comes to tackles for your team. Mm -hmm. You bring back your top leading tacklers from last season, but that's not just a fluke number. Those were very strong players for the Tigers as well. Can you take us through your defense? Yeah, really, really two good players there. And, and you know, they're both uh, our, our inside linebacker positions, and, and that's a very deep uh, position group for us. We've got some young guys there and, and some names that people don't know quite yet, uh, but they will. Uh, so we're, we're excited about that group. Chad had a great spring. He was second team All-American a year ago. Uh, just really has taken a big step forward in our program from a leadership standpoint. And, you know, he's coming back for his final year. And then you know, we have some other guys on that defense, um, you know, Kyron Simpson at corner, Devon Starks at safety. Those are, you know, two captains for us that are going to be great on the back end and, and just great leaders. They take a lot of reps and, and, you know, guys that we're excited about. We were we were very, very good on defense a year ago. Uh, our, I thought our, our coaches did a great job, but really our kids, 
you know, kids are the ones that have to go out and put it out there. And I thought our guys did a great job on defense of, of really executing the game plan, keeping us in a lot of games, um, you know, have, having, uh, you know, some shutouts, great numbers. We were leading the country in a, in a number of number of big stats as the season went through and some of the ESPN, um, you know, efficiency ratings and some of those things. We were tops in the country. Uh, for most of the season. So I think our defensive uh, assistant coaches did a great job. I think our defensive players did a great job. You know, we're going to miss, you know, guys like DJ White. You know, DJ is a three-time all-conference player. He was a couple times all-American, special guy, dynamic guy that everybody in the conference will be glad that he finally graduated and is gone. Uh, but I, I'm still excited that, you know, we're going to be we're going to be very good on defense. We have we've set the bar high. And uh, we're excited about, you know, again, their comfort level, which I've said about three different times. Uh, but, again, going into year two, I think that, uh, you know, uh, knowledge of the scheme is much higher. And I think our guys are excited about, you know, being able to go out and take advantage of that. Should It sounds like it's a theme in-house there, Coach, so that, that comfort level. And if it is a little bit higher for you, that has to be something that makes a little bit less so for opponents over the course of the season. One more area is special teams, and Chris Klein and Drew Rader uh, both kicking and punting for you. Uh, it was a, a unit that, as a whole, was second in the country in punting yards, mm -hmm. both of them averaging better than 40 per punt, and you saw time with both of them on the field. Uh, they're both returning, as a matter of fact, uh, for that unit, uh, not only punting but kicking as well. Yeah, it was an interesting dynamic. Well, both of those guys, uh, you know, they, they kick and punt uh, and then handle some kickoff duties as well. You know, Chris is a lefty and Drew is a righty. And last year we we majored a lot in rugby punting when we did punt. Uh, so we we taught ourselves how to punt both ways. And, and it was an interesting thing to coach because usually when you're rugby, you just focus on one way and it's more of a mix up and here we are asking our guys to to run that entire scheme both ways which is is more complicated for the guys up front blocking than the guys kicking uh so those guys actually had the most changes so it was an interesting dynamic for us it worked really well i thought our guys did a great job with it uh and it was a, a nice uh tool in the toolbox for us to make teams prepare for that rugby punt going both ways uh, but Ultimately, we'd like to punt less. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll still have that that tool in the toolbox and we'll do those things. Uh, but, you know, those guys are, are two talented guys. and You know, one's going into his, his grad year and one's going into uh, his true sophomore year. And, and uh, you know, we're excited to have both of those guys back with, with Chris and Drew. Camp right around the corner. Schedule starts in September. Don't have the week zero games. Matter of fact, just a nine game schedule for the Tigers this season. Gets underway September 2nd. You're home for your first couple of games Kentucky Christian on the 2nd and Pikeville. We mentioned them already on the 9th. Then a bye week, uh, and actually a bye week before two pretty tough road games. You have a bye week before September 23rd game at Reinhardt. And then another bye week before you start conference play on the road at Bethel. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, two great teams that everybody knows about. But, you know, there's some some opponents before that. It's not just coach speak, but, you know, our focus is on KCU and, and uh, you know, and moving into Pikeville. Pikeville's a team that is improving rapidly uh, or in this region as well. Uh, but, yeah, we, we've got that buy going into to Reinhardt. And, you know, early season buys, you know, it, there's some good and bad to it. You like to get in a rhythm, but it's also not a bad thing. You got a couple games and then you got an opportunity to, to reset and continue to work on yourself. And you're playing a really good opponent on the road uh, at their place. And, and, you know, North Georgia, it's going to be hot and, and all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a challenging schedule. You know, we, we, we've tried like – crazy to find that right uh, opponent for the 10th and and you know it hasn't worked out uh, to this point and it, you know with some of the changes in the conference that you and I talked about earlier so we got a little bit of a one year lull on that but you know we're going to play the games that that are on the schedule and and uh, you know the mid south conference is is really tough uh you're going to have your hands full uh, it's easy to point to uh some of those teams that have, have won championships in recent years but I can tell you there's no weeks off in the Mid-South. And uh, I'm excited that we've been a part of this conference collectively for 
for a while now. Uh, and I remember when when we came in in 2010 and Lindsey Wilson with a bunch of freshmen and got our teeth kicked in a few times and Coach Cronin at Georgetown kicked, kicked our teeth in a little bit and, and all that good stuff. But it's been fun to watch this conference grow in quality from top to bottom. We've always had – you know, one or two really good teams at the top that were competing to make a run. Uh, but I think we're at the point now in the Mid-South that, that man, the top half, uh, top 60, 70 percent of the conference year in and year out is really strong. And, and, you know, I've been fortunate to be able to watch a lot of playoff football over the years and, and trade video and watch other conferences. There's a lot of great conferences in the NAI. And I think the Mid-South has gotten to a point over the past – four to five years where I would put the top of our conference up against the top of any conference in the country. Uh, I didn't used to be able to say that uh, across the board, but I think that that's where the Mid-South is at. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be ready. It's going to be a big challenge. We look forward to watching. This should be fun. And I'm looking forward to getting to see this, this season underway for you year two. And again, comfort level. That's that's what I'm taking away from this one. It's a little bit higher there in Georgetown right now, and that should be something that opponents should be keeping in mind that the Tigers are ready to go in 2023. Coach Chris Oliver, thank you so much for taking time with us today. We will follow you all this season, and I do appreciate you being on the show with us. Yeah, we appreciate your coverage, Joey. Thank you.